of who is joining us on the webinar today. So I'm going to start a poll. Just to see if you can let me know uh, if you're coming to the conference, if you're kind of on the fence, if you're planning on registering, uh, just so I kind of know uh, who I'm speaking to today. It looks like uh, most some are well. We have a really uh, good split here. So we got almost uh, four in ten said they are coming. Uh, about a third have no plans on uh, coming. So I've got a hard sell there for you guys. Uh, and I've got about one in four of you on the fence. So thank you very much. So just a conference at a glance. This is expected to be the largest conference um, and likely one of the largest uh, educational programs in general that FAN or FAIR has ever done. We're expecting to more than double the attendance of any single conference that we had last year. We have nearly two dozen exhibitors uh, in attendance there, and, and they are growing every day. Uh, 45 sessions and more than 50 speakers. And some of the sessions and speakers were invited, but many were selected as part of a competitive proposal process. Uh, and what I'd like to do before anything else is thank the folks that helped us put this program together. Uh, this is our conference planning subcommittee. It is a subset of FAIR's Support Group Leader Advisory Council. Uh, all great folks uh, led by two co-chairs, Kelly Morgan uh, and Michelle Fogg, who have just been great leaders in this process. And then Jennifer, Denise, Cherie, Caroline, Jenny, and Angie, uh, who also helped us review the many proposals, the overwhelming proposals we got in this year uh, to speak at the conference. So when we first announced that we were moving away from the regional conference series, we naturally had some questions about why we were changing course on this. So you may be asking why to move to a national conference. First and foremost, we wanted to uh, create a sense of national community. Uh, this is a growing public health issue with more than 15, 15 million people now affected. It's important, uh, while local involvement is extremely important and that support network is, is important, it's also important to learn from really the best of the best and bring all those folks together. And as such, uh, this allows us to bring leading researchers, healthcare professionals, advocates, families, all together in one place to learn beside one another. It also allows us to have focused tracks. So these tracks are designed for those new to food allergies, as well as those who are more experienced. A, a challenge that we had uh, in, in the old format uh, is that we were trying to accommodate everyone's uh, understanding really just in one track. So um, you may have had a Food Allergy 101 talk and folks that have been coming for the last five years are falling asleep in their chairs. And then when we get into some of the advanced research, the newly diagnosed uh, families are just completely overwhelmed. So this really allows you to, to find a session, no matter what time frame you're looking at, and to learn and grow regardless of your experience level. <clears throat> Truly unmatched faculty presenters. Uh, just having a national conference in general attracts higher caliber speakers. I think you'll agree with me as you see some of the, the speakers that we have that I'm uh, featuring here in this webinar today, uh, but all of them are great. Uh, that this is really a, a high level uh, of interest in this, and um, based on the proposals we got in the I think uh, that it, that's a, a testament to that. We're also using some of the cost savings of moving to this one conference. I mean, there are cost savings obviously involved with just one marketing plan, with just one flight out for my staff. Um, things like that add up slowly but surely. And one of the things we're doing is to giving is giving back for local programming. We gave over $135,000 in community outreach grants to local communities, uh, many of which are running regional conferences, uh, Boston, Utah, Seattle. We've got them really all over the, con uh, the country, and more information on those regional conferences are available on our website, and we are happy to and proud to support those as well. <clears throat> also, uh, you should not worry that this will always be in Chicago or here in D.C. We will be moving those around the country. Um, each year, so this conference will continue to move from region to region um, it's in the Midwest this year, so next year will be either the East Coast or West Coast. Um, we'll announce the date and location at this year's conference and then push that out on social media. Um, but uh, we will move this around each year so that we, for folks that can't travel for uh, whatever reason, just because of uh, special needs or time constraints, that they can still come to a future program. I will say that the families have not been dissuaded from this uh, with the national format. 
and it seems the families will travel for exceptional content. This uh, mirrors uh, what we saw at Teen Summit last year. We had 26 different states, D.C. and Canada represented. Already, was still well over a month ago uh, to register for this particular conference, we already have 29 states represented, the District of Columbia uh, and Canada. Um, so we'll hopefully we'll see some more of this map fill in as the days go by, uh, but we're really happy with the, the broad uh, geographical reach of the conference so far. Just some of the uh, conference logistics that I want everyone to be aware of. Uh, obviously the hotel this year is the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. There is a free shuttle from O'Hare Airport uh, that runs 24 hours. Um, there's discounted parking that we have as part of our contract as well. We, I believe we have it on the website. If not, we will have it up soon with the, the prices, but I believe it's about 50% off the regular rate. There is an L uh, subway stop that's directly across the street. So for those that are looking to get downtown, there's a, a cheap and effective way to do that. But this hotel is not situated in a typical kind of an airport uh, office park that some of these airport hotels are in. This is right in the heart uh, of a uh, Chicago suburb called Rosemont, for those who are familiar with that. And it's near shopping, restaurants, a comedy club, bowling alley, movie theater, uh, parks, lots of free activities going on, um, all really in a very short walking distance from the hotel. So uh, this is not your typical airport hotel that you're be, uh, you'll be a part of. Um, for those interested in the rates, we have a very competitive rate this year. Um, and if you book by June 2nd, you can ensure that you get that rate. It's $119 a night plus tax. Um, there is an extra $10 upcharge you can get if you want uh, one of the pure rooms, which is their uh, hypoallergenic rooms, although I think they may have sold out already in our block, uh, but may be worth a shot. For information on uh, the hotel, uh, how to register for that block, uh, if you go to www.foodallergy.org slash conference, you can find all of that information there and get a, a link to uh, either call in for the room block or to do it online. Now, without question, the, what we get asked the, the most frequently here is uh, how, do we find, how do we find safe foods to eat if I'm coming to this conference? You know, we have folks here with multiple allergens, uh, multiple food allergies that they're dealing with. Um, last year at Teen Summit alone, just an example, I think we had 56 allergies. Uh, I, I think just looking at the initial report so far, I think we've actually already outpaced that uh, with the folks coming here as well, unfortunately. So uh, we're probably in the 60 to 70 different allergy range uh, there. As you can imagine, then to try to come up with a banquet menu that could accommodate those 70 allergies is almost impossible. Um, so what we are offering is continental breakfast each day, and we're going to, take, to go at great lengths to make sure those different uh, food items are segregated uh, so that folks with one allergy may be able to eat some things and not others. In addition, ingredient li uh, labels are provided for everything down to the breads that are there, uh, and a member of the culinary team from the hotel will be available to answer any questions um, that you may have about that. Uh, um, we, we take great care just to go back to, to really hope to avoid cross contact as well uh, from just the, the way we place the items on the buffet uh, to care uh, at, around what utensils may be picked up and moved to one pan or another. We were very careful about that. We will have someone really assigned just to monitor that. <clears throat> so therefore lunch and dinner is on your own. And by the way, just to go up to the previous point, coffee and tea and soft drinks will be available all day. Um, uh, and again, with the kind of the additives to the coffee and tea, uh, the milk, soy milk will be very clearly marked and segregated as well. So that means lunch and dinner is on your own, uh, but we've been working with the hotel's restaurant to make sure special menus are available for our attendees. Um, now, of course, again, it's impossible to really accommodate all of those allergies with one single plate. Uh, so we're working with the hotel to make sure that they can accommodate special needs uh, on the fly. Uh, in addition, we've been working with Chef Joel Schaefer, formerly of Disney, with Allergy Chefs Incorporated, uh, to uh, alter some of the existing menus uh, on the hotel uh, restaurant uh, menu to um, be more accommodating for our folks. So as soon as we have those, we're finalizing those now. As soon as we have those ready, we will make those available um, to those that are coming. But some local restaurants have also been vetted uh, for their ability and willingness to serve our attendees. Uh, you will get a list uh, of those uh, restaurants in your welcome bag. Uh, but I'm looking at Kristen now because we should probably go ahead and put those up on the site ahead of time now. Yep. So you can go ahead and do your homework as far as calling. So we'll do that after this call. 
We do realize that no matter how much care is given by the hotel to keep our attendees safe, however, uh, that some families will still need a place to store or prepare specialty items. Uh, as such, we'll be continuing our very successful hospitality room that we launched at last year's Teen Summit. This private room is only accessible to our attendees. We'll feature, we'll feature multiple refrigerators, freezers, and microwaves, as well as cleaning supplies and bottled water. It will be open 24 hours a day, starting on the morning of Friday, June 20th. Uh, and some of these um, refrigerators, freezers, and microwaves will also be uh, marked in order to segregate some allergens from others. So there'll be a, a few peanut tree nut free uh, refrigerators, a few milk free, which is really important because of spillage issues there. Um, so those will, will not allow those things in there. Uh, we'll be checking it. Um, we do ask that people not eat in that room um, because we don't want a, suddenly a safe room to turn into a not so safe room. So, but it's, uh, it's in the hotel, it's always open. Um, you know, you can go down there at 2 in the morning and microwave something if you've got something upstairs that you need. And just to be clear, we are, there's absolutely no food or beverages will be allowed in the session rooms. Um, we are really trying hard to combat that this year because as much as we can, we try to uh, prevent people from bringing those in. Inevitably, no matter how hard we try, about five or ten minutes in, we hear the, the crinkling and the rustling. Uh, at some point. So uh, we have room monitors for the rooms uh, while volunteers posted at the door to try to prevent them from coming in the first place, the, the food items. Um, but we'll also, again, try to strictly enforce that as much as possible. We certainly can use your help as well if you're coming to the conference. If you see someone eating, uh, to let the room monitor or someone on the staff know so we can uh, rectify that situation. So the most important thing uh, that you're interested in is a preview of the program itself. Uh, we really wanted to bring together, as I mentioned earlier, the, the leading uh, experts in this field uh, around food allergy in multiple different areas. Um, and in previous conferences, uh, the regional structure uh, that FAN had employed, and as we did again last year, was really only one or two docs. Um, and again, with a, a national reach and wanting to get as many perspectives as possible, we felt it was important to have uh, several doctors, many doctors there, uh, for different sessions. So as such, we have Dr. Ruchi Gupta from Northwestern and Lurie Children's Hospital. We're talking about a, a, a great program, a research program that they put together with Chicago Public Schools. Um, Ruchi, we also be sticking around, is presenting at Leader Summit the day before for our, which is a closed program we're doing for some of the um, volunteer advocates that we work with. Uh, Dr. John Lee of uh, Boston Children's and also Allergy Home will be there as well. He's doing two sessions on the MITS. Uh, the myths and misperceptions uh, of food allergies. He's doing one with teens and then one with uh, the, their parents uh, just to kind of see where the myths align with each other. It's going to be a really fun, interactive uh, program that he's putting together. Uh, Dr. Paul Bryce uh, is a scientist that works in food allergy research, and he's really looking at talking about the biology uh, of food allergies, what cells are involved, uh, why do we think we've evolved this allergic response to food allergies, what's actually happening during an allergic reaction, um, and how the, the treatments, epinephrine actually, and uh, or immunotherapy actually, we think it's work, how, how it works, the mechanism behind that. So really a very um, uh, down-to-earth but simultaneously sciencey talk from Dr. Bryce. Scott Sischerer, everyone knows Scott Sischerer from Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, he will be doing our Food Allergy 101 talk this year. Uh, and uh, in addition, he'll be joined by Dr. Brian Vickery and Andrew McGinnity. Uh, Dr. Vickery is uh, from uh, UNC. Uh, Dr. McGinnity is from uh, Boston. Um, the two of them have been involved in lots of the different research studies currently out there, so the three of the, these docs will be uh, on a panel talking about all the different research being done and be able to ask your questions about uh, what's happening with the, the, state, the state of research right now. And uh, we're also very happy to have Dr. Sarah Budra Romano uh, and Dr. Jacqueline Pongrasic, uh, both from Northwestern. Um, Dr. Budra Romano, you may know as the, runs the blog, The Allergist Mom. So she is not only a pediatric allergist, uh, but she is a mom of several children with food allergies. Uh, she, her talk, uh, along with Dr. Pongrasic, they're presenting together, is called Multiple Food Allergies When Peanuts Are Only Part of the Problem, and really talks about that family perspective and also mom's perspective.
one thing that's challenging for lots of folks here is understanding really the, the rights uh, that, that those with food allergies have, especially students with food allergies, uh, in regards to disability issues. So uh, we are extremely happy to have uh, Jim Long, uh, this should say, sorry, former senior attorney with the Office of Civil Rights, I believe he retires at the end of the month. Uh, so while he will not be in the capacity of uh, being with the OCR, he will have literally just retired less than a month previously. Um, and he's got a great session called Section 504, Title II and Serving Students with Disabilities. Uh, it's going to focus on the basics of navigating the laws, guaranteeing equal access to education for students with disabilities specifically severe disabling food allergies. So his presentation will stress mostly on K through 12 education, but will also touch on issues related to post-secondary students with severe food allergies. And uh, Jim was uh, a participant at one of our uh, college food allergy summits that we just recently did. He was a, such a, a, just a force there uh, and, and super helpful. He's so knowledgeable in this area. Uh, I think this will be a really exciting talk, uh, not only for the families there, but even some of the doctors that may be hanging around uh, to hear this as well. And probably the, one of the crown jewels of the conference, I would say, is the fact that we have Pete Wright, who's an attorney and author, uh, founder of rightslaw.com, uh, who is doing a session called Special Education Law and Advocacy Specific to Food Allergies. Now, you may ask, why is he so special? If you're not familiar with uh, Pete Wright, he is really one of the leading disability lawyers in the country. He, has, uh, he does these, this, these uh, school disability talks all over the country. They often sell out. Um, and there's also usually a pretty hefty uh, registration fee to get him there uh, and to offer his books to those that, that attend. Uh, for us, uh, for you guys that are attending, uh, this is actually included with the price of admission. Uh, so uh, if you pay the regular registration fee, and you could even do a Sunday-only registration fee if you wanted to, uh, you can join uh, Pete's session. It's a four-and-a-half-hour session he has designed specifically for food allergies. So even if you've seen Pete Wright present before, you've not seen him present like this. He is focusing, tailing the entire talk to food allergies. Um, and uh, in addition, three of uh, Mr. Wright's books will also be available, uh, will be given to those that uh, register and select his session uh, during the registration process. Space is limited. I believe we're about half full right now. Um, so uh, I would encourage you, if you're going to register, to do it sooner rather than later to make sure you get into Pete's talk. Uh, we also have food and nutrition experts. Uh, if you've ever been to one of our conferences before or seen one of our webinars or really just been in this community for a while now um, or had a good experience at Disney, it's really because of uh, chefs like Joel Schaefer and his wife Mary, uh, who uh, run Allergy Chefs Incorporated. They're going to be doing two interactive sessions, uh, one called Reconstructing Teen Recipes and the other called Reinventing Family Recipes. Obviously, the big difference there is for different age groups. Um, but the goal is to... Uh, really deconstruct and then reinvent some classic recipes, uh, both for, for both uh, audience members and also talk a little about some, some cooking tips uh, that he would offer as well with that. Um, there will be no actual food prepared there, um, but he'll just be going through the process of how you would design a recipe. Um, so again, the goal is to really just create these nutritional recipes allergy, that are allergy, allergy safe. Um, the great part about this, for those that participate in Joel's session and in part of the interactive session where you're you know, working to create some of these recipes. One recipe that our audience members uh, design uh, from both sessions are going to be included in a new cookbook that Joel and Mary are working on for FAIR. Um, so, you know, you can get, uh, in addition to um, standing out at the session itself, you get another 15 minutes of fame um, by, uh, you know, joining, uh, being a part of this cookbook that they're putting together for us, which, is, which we expect to probably have, I would say, in late fall. We also are very happy to have uh, Dr. Linda Herbert and uh, Mary Beth Fueling. Uh, Dr. Herbert is a food allergy psychologist uh, from uh, Children's National Medical Center here in Washington, D.C. Uh, Mary Beth is a nutritionist with uh, Milwaukee Children's Hospital. They're both on FAIR's education working group, fantastic ladies. Uh, they're going to be discussing the nutritional and mental health aspects of living with food allergy and how it applies to daily life. So you'll learn about nutrition, how to manage the may contain statements, food prepared by others, and, and a little bit of a review of the emergency preparedness uh, around uh, food. Um, and this, another talk we have is Dr. Kate Grimshaw. If you've ever heard Kate speak before, she's amazing. Uh, she's invited to speak all over the world. Um, I know she's speaking next month, for example, in, in Copenhagen at the Yaki Congress. Um, she's a, a 
one of the most respected uh, nutrition experts really in the field, and uh, especially Quad AI, they, they recognize her in the same way as well. Um, her talks, an enjoyable, nutritionally rich exclusion diet is a possibility, not a dream. So really uh, kind of from soup to nuts, uh, terrible pun, uh, from soup to nuts, uh, really the, the, everything related to uh, a, a good nutritional and a nutritionally rich balanced diet for those with food allergies. So again, I would highly recommend her talk as well. Um, in addition, we are happy to have uh, Dr. Brent Kobielesch. He's a food scientist with General Mills, who's the head of uh, product safety for all the General Mills products. He's also a board member of FARP, uh, Steve Taylor's group, which many of you are familiar with. Uh, his talk is Labeling and Sanitation and Industry Perspective. Um, so this will really be talking about uh, the key elements, including sanitation that influencing, influence the labeling pro pro practices with the food industry. Um, so why are there so many different labels? You know, which ones do I trust? How do I know that this one's real and not kind of a, a CYA kind of a label that's on there? Uh, he'll really talk about kind of what to look for, what questions to ask when you're doing your additional homework and calling some of these manufacturers, and why manufacturers uh, label things the way they do. Um, so he's being a brave guy to stand up there with all the issues that are around labeling uh, and take your questions. Um, so if you're coming to the conference, please be easy on him. Uh, although he's a he's a really great, open, frank guy, and I, I think this is going to be a fantastic talk. We also have leaders from several peer organizations, Dr. Wendy Book, who's the board president from the American Partnership for Eosinophilic Disorders, uh, Tanya Winders, who's the, the president and CEO of ANMA, uh, and Becky Moreland, who's the Great Kitchens Program Director for the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness. So Dr. Book will be covering Eosinophilic eosinophilic disorders. Tanya will be covering uh, the relationship of asthma to food allergies and anaphylaxis. Uh, and Becky will be talking about uh, the relationships of celiac. Uh, as all of you know, many of these, these three disorders uh, are also uh, existing in, in many of our other folks with food allergies as well. Also, where would our conference be without having some amazing parent advocates? And we have them again this year. Uh, I'm happy to have Trish and Caroline, two fantastic support group leaders. Uh, one from North, Trish from North Carolina, Caroline from Nevada, who's doing a talk called Role Play Time, Explore Effective Food Allergy Communication Techniques. Um, so it's going to help you uh, get comfortable uh, in different food allergy communication situations um, so out, and how to use that to advocate for you, you or your child's uh, uh, behalf. Um, so role play situations such as speaking to the classroom, other classroom parents about parties, talking with a family member about a wedding, um, and uh, other issues like that will really give you some good takeaway techniques that you can start to employ as soon as you get home. Gina Klaus, who's FAIR's Director of Education, will be doing a parenting primer. Um, it's a three-part workshop that will cover the basics of food allergy management at home, preschool, and friends and family. Uh, the three parts are 10 things children with food allergies want you to know. Uh, from horrified to hope, hopeful, which is practical tips and seven essential strategies to build a foundation for your uh, quote, new normal life with food allergies, and then preparing for preschool, proven strategies for navigating snacks, field trips, projects, parties, uh, and how to work with teachers and school administrators, and how federal laws of ZDA and Section 504 can help protect your child there. In addition, Jill Mendlin, uh, support group leader from New York, Kelly Morgan from Washington State, and Tammy Zundell from Utah, will be doing a talk called Support Groups from the Ground Up. Uh, and, you know, whether you live in a community that has a support group or uh, doesn't, you either you walk away there with, with tools on how to either set one up or how to make an existing support group in your area even better uh, and, and really leverage the resources that, that they provide there. And then many, many more, which we just, for the sake of this, don't really have time to cover all of them, unfortunately. <clears throat> Another parent advocate who is serving as our uh, keynote address uh, speaker is Curtis Sittenfeld. Curtis is the best-selling author uh, of several books on the New York Times bestseller list. She's also a food allergy mom, and her talk is called Finding Your Food Allergy Voice. So really she's going to be talking about her experiences living with food allergies as a parent and how she was able to turn her literary talents into an awareness tool um, and giving some guidance to the folks there as finding what your talents are um, and, and how you can use that to uh, you know, improve your own child's life or your life, uh, but also that of the community in general. Uh, we also have a couple other big announcements we're going to be uh, uh, doing around the keynote as well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've got uh, some things that just have not wrapped up completely. 
uh, that I can't announce them yet, but I promise uh, when you hear some of these things that we're adding to this as well, I think you'll be uh, just as excited as we are, are here uh, for, for what's going to be happening on Saturday afternoon and evening. In addition to the great adult programming that we have, we do have, uh, again, continued our successful teen programming. That's always been a part of what FAIR does here. Uh, again, for those of you not familiar with our conference, it's a dedicated track for teens and young adults, ages 11 to 22. It is a private, safe environment that allows them to share openly and big, bold, underlined letter, no parents are allowed. Uh, the, best, the, the most important part of this track is that these kids can share things openly uh, in front of well-respected speakers uh, with others there to, to really share their experiences in an open environment and say things that, frankly, they may not, may not be, they may be scared to say around with adults in the room. Um, we've got very experienced folks in those sessions. We have nurses and doctors uh, on call should anything goes wrong, uh, go wrong, which we've not had that happen before. Um, so we're hoping um, uh, that the parents that are coming with their teens will allow them to kind of have that, that safe environment uh, in those tracks. Uh, we have lots of experiential sessions, including creative writing about food allergies, recipe creation, which I mentioned earlier with Joel, yoga, uh, and then lots of informational sessions on uh, going to college, traveling, uh, the food allergy myths I talked about with John Lee, uh, and uh, really it's just a way to, way to build awareness uh, in your community and in your school. Uh, and, the, and for a lot of the, for several of these talks, especially like the one on awareness building, um, it, it's from teens to teens which is so important for them to hear from their peers and not just be talked at, uh, you know, from one of us old fogies that work at FAIR. So um, we, we hope to have uh, another great uh, track there with that. Uh, one really great piece that we've always done is an Ask the Expert. Uh, so we provide an allergist to uh, the teens, this will be at the end of the day on Saturday, where they can ask any kind of question that they may have been afraid to ask uh, previously when, when they're at a doctor's appointment. Uh, so Dr. Sischer is uh, kindly giving uh, the better part of an hour to just respond to all those questions that they may have, again, in that safe environment. And I'll talk a little bit about this again later, and again, not quite able to announce the exciting news coming soon, um, but we will have a Saturday evening reception for all the teens in attendance as well. Um, uh, again, they'll, uh, music, fun, games, uh, video games, lots of things. Uh, to help these kids uh, connect with their peers uh, and kind of learn strategies uh, on how to, to, to deal with the anxiety and the daily life of food allergies. And in addition to the regular team programming, just like in the adult sessions where we know that one track isn't ever enough to meet all the interests of every single attendee, it's the same with teens as well. And this year we wanted to not only offer more sessions to these amazing teens, we also wanted to help with some of the anxiety that comes with living with food allergies. And thus the goal uh, behind this new endeavor called the Creative Connection Room, which is, uh, really serves both of these pur purposes. It gives uh, ki these kids uh, another outlet uh, for their anxiety and stress and creativity, uh, but another option in case one of the sessions they may go be going to is, doesn't really meet their needs. Uh, it, we are happy to have this sponsored by Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago, who are graciously providing, uh, I think, about six different therapists art therapists, music therapists, dance therapists, movement therapists. Um, and so you can see the schedule of everything that we have going on throughout the day there. It's really kind of a, a, a drop-in format. Um, and so we're really excited uh, about this opportunity and, and so interested to see what great things uh, some of these kids will, will use their creativity to do. In addition to the teen programming, uh, we have several, uh, in adult programming during the day, we have great evening activities this year. Um, for those of you that are coming in early, <clears throat> uh, registration desk will actually open as, as early as the evening of June 19th, Thursday, June 19th. Um, that's because we do have a closed session on Friday for our support group leaders, walk chairs, and other invited advocates. Um, there's a closed reception for any of those folks that are on the call today at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, that's also going to include a trivia tournament, so make sure if you're coming for that and you're one of them by the guests that you make sure you make it out for that. On Friday, June 20th, then uh, the evening, believe it or not, we actually start with programming that night before. We start so early on Saturday, and we know that so many folks get in the night before. And maybe uh, before the sessions even start on Saturday. As such, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, on uh, Friday, June 20th, 
we have a session called The Truth About Life and Death. Uh, uh, Kristen Cockey, who is a, a social worker and food allergy mom from the Chicagoland area, uh, and also spoke at one of our webinars recently, uh, is going to be talking about uh, you know, what are the delicate and appropriate ways to talk to your child about anaphylaxis? How and when should you handle the issue of fatalities? Um, what are the surprising ways that your child might be protecting you from the truth? Uh, and how do you maintain proper perspective? So she'll be talking about not only from it, not only from her clinical research and professional expertise, but also from her kind of real life expertise as well. I'm really excited about that talk. Uh, for those looking for more of a support group, um, so we're you know for those that are looking at, not to have a support group in their area, it's really kind of tied to the geography there. So uh, let's say you are in a support group in St. Louis, you know, you may have lots of different folks coming to that support group from kids, from adults with food allergies to uh, parents of toddlers to parents of college kids. Um, and while that's great to have that geographic connection, we've found uh, that even a deeper or different kind of a connection can happen uh, when looking around, kind of grouping parents together by same age ranges or other commonalities. So as such, since we have folks from all over the country here, we're running a few support groups that evening. Uh, honored to have Denise Bunning and Ann Thompson, founders of MOCA, which is, I think, believe one of the first food allergy support groups in the country, uh, doing a support group for parents of high school and college students at 7 p.m. on Friday evening. Uh, and Laura Holland, who runs one of the, maybe the only uh, online adult food allergy uh, support groups that are out there, uh, doing a session on adults managing daily eating with multiple food allergy support group. So for the adults with food allergies that are in attendance, a great place for you to start meeting folks and, again, prime the pump for the next day. Um, uh, information on, uh, on her group, for those of you who may be familiar with Laura's group, is available on the uh, FAIR website under support groups as well. Uh, we, at 8.15, uh, this session is called Using Sign Language with Your Food Allergy Child. Uh, and as the parent of, a, of toddlers who found some limited success myself, uh, just trying to use sign language to communicate, this was really a, a very creative and interesting session uh, that was proposed to us, and the proposal committee really was excited about having it in there. Uh, it's, it's basically using American Sign Language with an infant or toddler um, that has food allergies to really give another level of security and confidence for both the children and the parents before they can communicate verbally. So um, you'll hear about one family's experience with using this uh, and learn about some of the other benefits associated with that. So for those with younger kids, it's a, it's a great opportunity for you to attend that. Uh, and uh, running simultaneously as a support group for those navigating EOE, either personally or as a family member, uh, run by Tammy Zendel from uh, the uh, Utah uh, Food Allergy Support Group. On Saturday, we, uh, in addition to the other sessions Joel's running, we're keeping Joel and Mary pretty busy, he's doing a session called Creating a Food Allergy Safety Zone at Home. Uh, and that is, we're saying that take a journey in Chef Joel's kitchen. So we're actually going to have some kitchen equipment uh, set up uh, in the room. Uh, Chris is looking at me with the fingers crossed because we're actually still trying to see if we're going to be able to get uh, a large appliance or uh, uh, store to give us some props for that. Uh, we'll have some props one way or the other there <laughs> uh, for that. But we're hoping to really make this kind of like an exhibit. So you can actually kind of walk through and see the different uh, danger zones uh, that you may not be thinking about in your home kitchen, and, and Chef will, will be walking you and talking you through that. In addition, for those that are FAIR members, there will be a FAIR members-only reception and book signing uh, at 5.30 p.m. after the session's end on Saturday. Curtis Sittenfeld, our keynote speaker, Ruchi Gupta, Pete Wright, uh, and potentially one other person who I can't announce yet will be doing uh, be present there for that. Um, we'll just have probably um, uh, it won't be, you shouldn't expect a dinner from this, really just be probably uh, drinks and maybe some light snacks available uh, for our members. Um, basically, when you check in, you'll get a ribbon that says uh, a member, a uh, fair member on it, and that's how we'll, you can gain entry there. You won't need a special ticket or anything to get into that. Uh, 7 p.m., and the reason I have that asterisk, an asterisk beside that is that may, time just may change slightly based on, again, the announcement I keep heading to that I can't talk about yet. Uh, we'll have both adult and teen reception. great round table kind of a format. Uh, so we'll have some pocket tables that you can find some other peers that may be interested in the same kinds of things. Uh, and for the teen reception, I kind of already talked about a little bit. 
really cool thing I'm happy to have part of the conference this year is that you're able to plan your experience uh, with a website called sketch.org that we've added to the conference page. The system not only allows you to sort by tracks, by room locations, speakers, etc., but you can even use the tool to plan your own customized program by selecting the talks you're planning on going to and creating your own agenda. So uh, I guess you'll probably see my mouse here. Uh, but you can sort, and this is not live, so I apologize uh, for the slide I have here, but uh, uh, you can sort by the different tracks. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we have lots of different tracks here, beginner tracks, intermediate, advanced tracks, team tracks. So you can sort by that. You can also, when you click on schedule, you can sort by uh, rooms. If you just want to see when a, when a particular room, if you want to see what talks a particular speaker is in, um, you can really see all of those things there. Um, once you click on a particular talk, uh, this will, you'll get a lot more information. What room it's in, bio on the speakers, abstract of the speakers, and the really cool part about this is, is once you open this up, uh, you can actually set your own custom agenda. So for example, I can click on this one, and this one, and this one, and say I'm attending, and you can print out your own custom agenda to kind of guide you through the process. You don't have to sit through and flip through the different, the program guide and figure out what's where, where should I be at this particular time. You can actually create your own printable uh, resource. And even better, you can actually access it from your smartphone or tablet. So uh, if you open the browser on your smartphone or tablet, uh, type in this URL. Uh, I'll leave this up for a second in case someone wants to write this down. Uh, tiny.cc slash fairconf. Uh, you can actually uh, pull up uh, the uh, pages I just showed you on your mobile home screen. Uh, and then a button will come up that will say install this web app, which you can see uh, right here. You can add it to your home screen, and then boom, right on your home screen of your phone, you can pull up the schedule uh, and see exactly where anything is at any given time. So we're super excited about this really interactive part of uh, the process that we'll have this year. Just a quick overview of the exhibit hall as well. So uh, we have, again, nearly two dozen exhibitors. Um, we won't read them all here, but you know some of the big players, obviously, as well as peer organizations, I mentioned AppFed, NSCA, ADMA, uh, Food Allergy Management Education, which is a, a great school resource uh, that lots of different uh, members of the community are working on collaboratively out of St. Louis Children's Hospital. Um, uh, some research institutions, so CHOP will be there, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Texas Children's, uh, food vendors, Well Amy, Surf Sweets, Skeeter Snacks, uh, Enjoy Life. I just said I wouldn't read them all off, and I'm doing that right now anyway. Uh, Solus Nutrition, Mocha, who I mentioned as well, uh, and then She Beads, which has a great uh, food allergy awareness jewelry, uh, will be there as well. Um, and uh, in addition to these, we'll also have a fair table there, so we'll have some of our free resources. Uh, we'll be able to answer questions about fair programs, uh, and we'll also have some different things like magnets and posters and stickers, uh, pencils that you can purchase uh, as well. So I mentioned earlier on that we do not allow any food or beverages in the uh, meeting rooms. So to ensure the safety of our meeting space and for all those in attendance, including those with less common food allergies. So while Enjoy Life, for example, is free of the top eight, or actually more than that, free the, I think the top 10, if you include the Canadian listings as well, uh, have great food. Um, but you know, if someone has a uh, less common allergy, there still may be something even in an Enjoy Life project, a product that may uh, cause an, an issue, just with the same with the others. Um, so because of that, we don't want these food samples to be given out kind of on the fly and end up in the rooms that we're trying to protect anyway. Um, so the food vendors will give you a, uh, any point in the day, will give you a voucher with uh, the name of the company on it, your information. Um, you hand it into the fair staff at the end of the day, and then you're given that day's sample. We do that for two reasons. Again, one, to protect the integrity of the class, the learning environments that we have, and two, uh, to uh, uh, really make sure that when you're handed that voucher to get the product, that you've had a conversation uh, with the exhibitor there to really understand what it is that you're going to be picking up. Um, because we don't want someone to just pick something up, assume it's safe, and there's something in there that could cause a reaction. So it's really just a, another safety mechanism to prevent any problem. And the good thing is, if, you know, if, if you're staying for both Friday or Saturday and Sunday, you can pick up two vouchers and get two samples. Um, so uh, we're really excited about, uh, about that aspect of it. In addition, so that, that's the process with the food vendors, but any of the exhibitors will also have 
uh, uh, these tickets that they'll be giving out, similar to the food vouchers, that are going to serve as raffle tickets. Um, and when you pick up, uh, when you stop by and say talk to Allergic Living or uh, or Fame or uh, Chop, uh, they'll have a personal high uh, uh, raffle ticket. They'll basically give you to say that okay, you've, they've had a conversation. Uh, you, when you pick up your food at the end of the day, or if you're not picking up food, uh, you bring those over uh, to the registration desk, drop them in a in a in a basket, and you know you've got raffle entries there for some giveaways we're doing, which I'll talk about in just a second, but. The more exhibitors you talk to, the more chances you have to win. So here are some of the giveaways. Uh, we have a signed book uh, by uh, Joel Schaefer, Serving People with Food Allergies. But in addition to the signed book, he'll also be doing a, a personal 30-minute recipe consultation uh, that he'll be doing for whoever wins that particular award. Or reward. So um, that, you know, if you've got a particular challenge you're having with a particular ingredient, uh, he'll give you some different options or cooking preparations that may help you with that. Uh, Our Train, uh, who is one of the partners that we use for safefair.org, uh, which I'll also talk about in just a moment, uh, is offering a free uh, one allergy Our Train manager training for your local community. So uh, Betsy Craig from Menu Trinfo, who is the company that runs that, is basically giving five manager trainings to you to give out to your community, either for five different restaurants, or if you've got a, a school that has five, you know, uh, food service workers uh, that you want to train. Um, they will do it for free. Um, you know, it's up to you to find out who that, that those places are that would be accepting the trainings, but they will uh, come to your community and do it uh, for free for those that uh, win that particular prize. Uh, whilst giving away a one-year fair membership, uh, free registration to either the, the 2014 Team Summit, which I'll talk about in a minute, minute or 2015 conference registration, uh, and we're hoping to have much more by the time we're done. But um, uh, even more reason to speak to the exhibitors if you did not have great reasons already. So hopefully, after talking about all of these great parts of the conference, I have convinced you to register. Um, and if you're ready to do that, you can visit foodallergy.org slash conference. Uh, registration is open. There is a $25 discount for current fair members. Uh, it, you can log into the members only section of the site to get that code to get that discount. Um, there is, online registration will close on Monday, June 16th. doesn't mean registration itself is closed. It just means we've got to stop at some point to get the badges shipped out to Chicago. Um, so then we'll restart registration on a walk-in basis uh, starting with the evening of, of June 19th. So even if you're at the last minute, you, know, you, you, you go to bed on Wednesday night and you said, oh, I should have registered, there will still be an opportunity for you to come down to the Hyatt Regency O'Hare uh, and join us. So with the time I have left, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other fair education initiatives that we're doing this year um, in the education department. Uh, obviously, aside from this fantastic webinar, uh, we have some other monthly webinars that we'll be doing every month for free. Uh, the one in June, June 4th, will be called Food Allergy, Anaphylaxis, and the 911 Lottery. Um, I'm so excited about this talk. Uh, Judy Miller, uh, I'll talk a little bit about her a little bit later, but she's a, she's a medic, she's a registered nurse, she's an EMS educator. Uh, there really is it's few people that, that know uh, the issues around uh, EMS response to food allergy anaphylaxis or anaphylaxis in general uh, than Judy. So uh, her, her, she's doing the next webinar on June 4th. Following that, we're happy to have Gina Menet lee and Laurel Francoeur from um, uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts. Uh, doing a uh, webinar on food allergies in the preschool and daycare setting. That is July 9th from 1 to 2 p.m. And then we have other upcoming topics throughout the year that we'll announce later, nutrition, one on nutrition, a research update that we do every December, uh, and some, uh, 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 some really exciting folks that will be talking about some of the federal disability protections for those with food allergies as well. Uh, in addition to the conference, many of you know that we do offer a Teen Summit, which is a uh, similar program, really a lot, very similar format, but really intended for teens themselves uh, and their siblings uh, and their parents. Uh, that is November 7th through the 9th. It's at the Grand Hyatt in Washington, D.C. So for those that attended last year, we have a great location right in the heart of D.C. Have that again this year. It's a different hotel, but not far away. And this one is walking distance to the White House, the National Mall, the National Spy Museum. 
Smithsonian, Verizon Center, uh, shopping restaurants, four, four metro stops. There's plenty to do there to really make it a, a kind of a vacation. I don't know if you're interested in doing that. Again, sessions for teens, siblings, and parents. And we're hoping to improve on last year's record sending attendance, which broke the record by uh, over 25%, which we're just amazed at. Uh, we've already had people clamoring to register, so we're trying to get registration up as soon as possible. Uh, we actually are already accepting proposals to speak at this uh, conference as well. It's the first time we're accepting proposals for Teen Summit. So if you've got a compelling story or you've got a teen that really wants to tell their story or, or talk about some of the experiences they've had or skills that they've employed, we would love to get proposals from members of the community for that. We're accepting those proposals through June 24th, and that proposal system is on the FAIR website on, under Teen Summit. Uh, room reservations are being accepted now as well, so that's already open as well, and we're hoping registration, as I mentioned, will open soon here in June. The College Food Allergy Program, really it's been a uh, very busy, uh, large part of our efforts so far in the first part of the year. For those of you who have not seen the press releases or read about this program on our website, the goal is to improve the safety and quality of life of college students with food allergies. Uh, we have two summits of uh, subject matter experts that we held at Virginia Tech and the University of Arizona, of which we had over 50 colleges in attendance, as well as NACUS, which is the National Association of College and University Food Services, uh, again, NFCA, which is the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness, federal government representatives, parents, students, um, many, many more. Um, and the, the, the colleges in attendance were from all departments, so resident life, health services, disability services, dining services, administration, I uh, really like to get a, a nice broad perspective uh, on, on this, uh, what we need to do uh, from a guidelines perspective. So pilot phase guidelines will be ready by the end of the summer. Um, not sure if we're going to release those yet because it is a pilot phase, right? So we, uh, we want to test what we put together in a few select colleges uh, that we'll select in the fall, probably about six to ten colleges. Um, and we'll not only be implementing these guidelines, we're offering them free trainings, free materials for parents, free materials for students, helping them set up social groups for those with special dietary needs, um, lots of great uh, pieces to, to the project. We'll watch those pilot schools for about a year. We'll see how they do. We'll see if there are any hurdles uh, that we need to overcome or any changes we need to make to the guidelines, and uh, we'll improve the system from there and, and move forward. I, I will say that uh, any school that wants to take on any part of these guidelines or do the trainings or get some of the materials, even if they're not in the pilot phase, can obviously take them on at any time as soon as we release those in the fall as well. Uh, I should have also mentioned uh, that you, you don't want to miss the college panel at the conference, which is on Sunday, June 22nd. Betsy Craig from NU Trinfo, Beth Winthrop, Winthrop, who is the lead dietitian for uh, college products for Sodexo, uh, Ann Thompson, who's a uh, support group leader, volunteer extraordinaire, and mom of a food allergic student at Purdue uh, will be a part of that. Uh, Christy Grimm, who's our new uh, college outreach manager, um, and I'm forgetting someone. And, uh, well, it is on our website, and I apologize to the person who is escaping me uh, right now. But we have a really robust uh, panel uh, at the college to really cover all the different aspects. Uh, oh, Becky Moreland uh, from National Foundation for Celiac Awareness. Uh, she, uh, they have a, a training program already for celiac awareness, so they've been very instrumental in helping us kind of uh, uh, either not reinvent the wheel in some areas, but just to recognize some of the hurdles we may have to overcome, so she's been extremely helpful on that process. Safefair.org, which I'm sure you probably saw that we launched recently, uh, the goal is to have a database of trained restaurant staff uh, on safefair.org uh, to get the word out about safe dining on the program in general and this resource. We have a, a PSA that's running nationally uh, on uh, ABC and CBS morning shows on the weekend uh, with Mike Isabella and Brian Voltaggio of Top Chef, Chef fame. Um, and really, we need your help to spread the word on this program. We have a flyer that's available for you to download, uh, to take to your local restaurant, to encourage people uh, to um, uh, get trained and to register their uh, restaurant on the, the, the site. Um, the issue we're seeing right now and why there's a little bit of a lag is we've got thousands of people now trained to the programs we're offering, but we just got now, now that we finally have the, the site launched, it's only been up about two weeks, uh, getting to the next step of taking their, their certificate and logging all their information in on the site so that we can list them. Uh, in addition, I mentioned uh, Judy Miller and her webinar, um, but in the fall, we are going to be having an EMS-ER summit 
with the goal to create a roadmap for improving the management of anaphylaxis from the first 911 call to discharge from the ER. There are lots of different uh, things we have to overcome there, access to epinephrine on ambulances, understanding and recognizing anaphylaxis from the EMTs when they arrive and making sure they take someone to the hospital to monitor for any biphasic reactions, um, and then really the understanding of anaphylaxis even at the ER uh, when you're being treated, uh, and then issues around discharge. Are they being referred to an allergist? Are they being given a prescription for epinephrine, et cetera? Um, there have been lots of studies that have kind of already analyzed a lot of these issues, so uh, we're hoping that we're going to walk away here with, with strategies for overcoming the issues that we already know exist. Um, and certainly this would go nowhere unless we involved a lot of the stakeholders that are involved with this. As such, we've partnered with the American College of Emergency Physicians, ASEP, uh, who will be a, a large participant in this summit as well. Uh, they also have tons of connections to a lot of different EMS groups, so uh, we're hoping for a pretty fruitful endeavor there with that partnership. Again, the summit will be in early uh, September, um, and we're just bringing subject matter experts in from really all of the country for that. So at this point, um, I will take any questions if we've got any in line. Yes. Um, one question was very excited about so many good sessions and um, asking if any of the sessions will be recorded for later viewers. So, uh, you, you probably, but only a few. Uh, the sessions from uh, Joel and Mary, the, uh, the adult recipe session, uh, not the teen one, because again, we try to really keep that privacy intact for the teen teens there, uh, but it's also his exhibit that he's doing on uh, food allergy safety will probably be recorded as well. Um, we really try to keep a nice, safe, private environment for folks uh, that are um, participating in, in, in this. Um, so we want to keep their questions private. And, and, and frankly, there's a, there's a challenge just with doing it from a, from a cost perspective as well. Um, but uh, we may explore it. I think to be perfectly honest, I think probably what we'll do this year is explore uh, kind of in a test case with some of Joel's talks this year, see how that goes, uh, and maybe expand some of the recordings next year. Can you just go back and repeat the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. The question was, will we be recording um, any sessions at the conference this year? And my answer was uh, in very limited quantities. That's just kind of a test case right now. Okay. The Next question was um, regarding next year's conference. They're not able to make this year, but they're already excited about next year and want to know what the dates are. Um, I, we, we are going to announce it at the conference. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm repeating the question as well, sorry. Uh, the question was when and where is the conference next year? I tell you what, for those of you that, that took the time to get on this webinar today, I will give you the when. Uh, but I won't release the where just yet. Uh, the when will be May 15th to the 17th. So we are doing this uh, in Awareness Week next year. Um, we're trying to build on some of the energy we have around this uh, moving forward uh, that we've done with this Food Allergy Action Month, which has been incredible and exceeded our wildest expectations already. Um, and uh, we'll be working with uh, local groups in the area that we're going to uh, to help, you know, build up some of their awareness initiatives for that week uh, around it. But it'll be in Awareness Week next year, May 15th to the 17th. Uh, but you'll have to wait to the conference uh, before we announce the location. Um, another question that came up was regarding the Pete Wright Symposium, which um, this may be more of a question for Kristen, but um, it's not, I guess, appearing on the interactive schedule, and she wanted to know if it will be added. So uh, the question was uh, regarding Pete Wright's uh, uh, interactive session uh, his, uh, on the sketch.org. It is there, but there's no abstract on the talk. The reason is we're, uh, he's actually been meeting with us uh, in the education department to really uh, continue to tweak that. Again, this is unlike some of the other speakers that may be kind of doing a presentation they've done before. This is brand new for Pete. He is building this from the ground up. Uh, that abstract, as soon as we have it ready, which I hope will be in the next week or so, we will drop that into Sketch as well. That's all we have. Okay, great. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, again, uh, I would encourage you as soon as you can when this opens to register for this webinar. The, the early buzz around this, which we haven't even really announced as many people yet, is growing. But again, the next webinar is food allergy, anaphylaxis, and the 911 lottery.
Uh, again, Judy Miller, she's a VP of Business Solutions and Innovation at SRXA, but she's also, as I said, an EMT uh, registered nurse and an EMS educator. We Wednesday, June 4th from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, member registration will open this Friday on May 16th, so you'll get a dedicated email for that. Uh, and then we'll open up to the general public on Monday. So members, this weekend, get registered so you, you make sure you have your spot. Uh, again, we'll open registration beginning Monday, May 19th. We will have a recording of this webinar available ASAP, hopefully within a week, uh, and have it up on the conference site as well. So um, if there's someone else you think might be interested in hearing more about the conference, uh, they can join uh, the webinar there to do that. Thank you again for attending today's program, and I'm very hopeful we'll see you all in Chicago. Thank you.